Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to show you how you can make hanging vines like this. And this is something that I felt like I should add into this scene for a while now, and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, and so I was putting it off. I was thinking through all these crazy complicated solutions about how to get hanging vines, and it turns out that this really quick and dirty solution actually looks fairly good, and so I'm just going to use that. You can see it's got a few holes in it, but let me show you real quick how I did it. So I'm going to hop into a new scene here. Don't need, well, actually, let's keep the light. <laughs> Don't need the camera or the cube. I'm just going to go import images as planes. And I found this fantastic texture on textures.com. If we look at the texture, it's just this wall, and there's these vines on it. And the wall is a little bit brighter than the vines, so that'll really help us. You can download it for free. It's not very high res, but it really does the job. So I'm doing this technique in Eevee, but it'll work in cycles just as well. Anyways, once we get this plane imported in, we can hop over to the shading tab. Okay, so we've got this texture feeding into a principal node. That's all good. Let's go Shift A and add in a transparent and also a translucent. Grab these guys here. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just go Control and Shift and right-click and drag between two nodes. That will mix them together with the mix shader. And then we can do that with these two. Very nice. All right, so I'm just going to grab this color and drop it into the translucent node. And let's cut this. All right, so what we're gonna want here is a little bit of bump. So I'm gonna go Vector bump. I'm just going to feed the color right into the height, turn this way down, and feed the normal into the normal on the principled shader, and onto the translucent shader. So we might want to play with this a little bit, and we're definitely going to want to play with this a little bit. Once we take a better look at this, when you import images as planes, the alpha map is working by default, but if you're working on a new material, you're going to want to make sure that in the settings, your blend mode is set to alpha blend. But we've got our plane here, and it's kind of see-through. That's all right. Let's make it so that it's just the white parts that are see-through, and the vines are there still. So I'm going to drag color and drop that into the factor on this last mix shader that's mixing the transparent with the other mix shader. And that's kind of interesting. Doesn't really help us out very much. So let's go converter and color ramp. That's still not really helping us very much. So let's hit this little drop down here and go flip color ramp. Now we can actually see our vines. And if we crank up the white value, we can see everything better. But we don't want to see everything better. We just want to see the vines. So I'm going to turn down the black value as well. And you start to see through. And this is just kind of a process of figuring out which parts look best. We're definitely going to lose quite a bit of this, but we can get just a little bit and it looks all right like this. But like I said, you want to play around with it a little bit to figure out what looks best for you. And then once you do this, if we just hop into edit mode really quick, we can just really roughly separate this out with some edge loops. Control R to do edge loop. And we can just kind of drop them in between these different clumps. And this is such a quick and dirty technique. It's really wonderful. It doesn't probably won't work so great when you do close-ups, but we really don't need it to do close-ups. We just need some hanging vines. All right, so we've got all these different parts. I'm going to select this one and go P, separate, and select with L, and then P, separate. And this just separates these different faces into different objects. And then once we go back out of edit mode, we can right-click, set origin to geometry. And now we have all these different little planes with little clumps of hanging vines on them. And you can drop these anywhere you like into your scene. If you want, you can like scale them up and make them thicker and rotate them around, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And you can really easily get a whole bunch of different patterns going on. And you can get them at different depths so they look like they're kind of 3D. So like I mentioned before, this is such a dirty technique. You're probably going to want to wash your hands after you use it. But after you've washed, it kind of gets some nice results. So, yeah, I hope you found it helpful.
And in fact, if you did find it helpful and you'd like to see more tutorials like this, there is a link in the description that says Free Hydraulic Kit Bash Elements. And when you click this link, it will sign you up for my email list. I'll make sure that the first thing I send you are some hydraulic kit bash elements for Blender. And these are completely free, and they're pretty good for kit bashing mechanical things together if you're into that. And then every week when I upload a tutorial, I just send that out to the list to keep everybody up to date. But yeah, that's what you can expect from that. And this is the end of the video. I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!